Hello everybody, I'm Prowl and this is Vault Hunters and we're about to go on a modded Minecraft expedition together in this mod pack made by Iscal85 and team. Hello. And this is going to be incredibly fun. I can't wait to go on this journey with you guys. We're going to start out here by doing just some of the basic Minecraft things while we talk a little bit about Vault Hunters. This is update 13 kind of technically update 13 comes out in a few days but it doesn't change anything up until the point where we go into our first vault and i will be recording that stuff after update 13 comes out so as far as you're concerned we're in update 13 right now and i don't know why i put that in my offhand i'm not used to java edition you'll have to excuse me i i am originally a content creator on the bedrock edition but i've really wanted to get into modded minecraft and honestly i've been playing this mod a little bit and it is perfect you see vault hunters is an arpg or rpg based mod and that is exactly the type of game outside of minecraft that i love being a long term like a long time diablo player myself something that hits in this like category is awesome to me and for those of you that don't know what an ARPG is or an RPG style game is basically we're gonna be going through this game um, and leveling up our character finding important gear that's going to help make us stronger specializing in abilities and spells that also make us stronger and just generally doing a lot of like fighting PvE style stuff and we're gonna be messing with a ton of different mods because one cool thing about how Vault Hunters works is as you go through running in these different vaults and playing the game you can unlock different mods that the game has to it it's its type of progression system we're going to go over all of that which is in this menu here um, in just a little bit but we have the abilities we have talents which are like passive skills we have expertise which you earn along the way that are even more powerful and you have researches that are different mods you can unlock and one thing that we're going to be doing specifically as we go through here is following this quest system that has been added in into the game. We actually hit the check mark here. We got ourselves a little bit of food right there. And we're going to be following this quest system. But first, we need to do the beginning game Minecraft stuff, which is I I would like to find some food. Oh yeah, we got oh a lot of sheep. This is perfect. Um, now we'll be able to um, craft a sleeping bag so we can sleep. Uh, this will also feed us for quite a little bit, which is awesome as well. And we need to find a place that looks decent enough to like set up a camp, maybe temporary, maybe permanent. We'll have to see what, what we find and how it looks. But either way, this is an awesome start to just find a whole bunch of sheep like right by us. Um, there is a mod in here for a mini map. You see it in the top right hand corner there. And we have a full size map here as well. And yeah, we're just going to, I guess, head out in this direction, collect a few things along the way. And we'll see what we get ourselves into. And then we'll start talking about Vault Hunters specific stuff and start doing our quests. Ooh, that's a cool looking mountain. Should we climb it? I, I think we should climb it. Oh, you know what? Maybe this is a good place to get a, a good start. We can go through and get a little bit of cobblestone. We can get rid of the wood tools that we already have and we can make some stone tools. OK, OK, good start. Good start. Um, I think we want enough to get a furnace. And always a good idea to pick up some coal early so we can get that furnace going without having to like do trees or something like that. I always like having a lot of coal. And didn't I see some iron? Yeah, some iron. That's three pieces. That's enough for a pickaxe. I always like to have an iron pick to start. It just feels good to be able to mine things a little bit faster. All right, anyways, up we go. Okay, what's... Oh. What is this? This is a nice little cozy area. Like a little bowl right up here at the top of the mountain. I like this. I like this a lot, actually. I think this will make a great temporary base. Maybe... Maybe even permanent base, dare I say? I don't know. What do you guys think? Temporary base or permanent base? You tell me. We'll take a look around here a little bit more here in a moment. But I guess if nothing else, this is a great place for us to just kind of set up camp. Let's make our sleeping bag, furnace, coal, food. We have the vault stake, but I'm going to I'm going to keep that vault stake. Like, as you can see, when I hold it here in my hand, it gives a lot of saturation, like a full bar of saturation. So I really don't want to use that. It's really good for the vaults. So if we have other foods to eat, we'll eat the other foods first. 
Um, in our hands here, we do have a Vault Hunters book, which is basically just like a introductory like manual to the game. I highly recommend looking through this or going through the Vault Hunters website. And we have a quest book, which is just a shortcut to opening up your quest, which you can do by hitting H like I did earlier and clicking on quest over here. It's the same thing. So if you lose your quest book, not a big deal. If you lose the um, Vault Hunters book here, that's not really a big deal either. Like I say, you can go to their website. I'm going to link down in the description below to a like a couple of really good resources I've been using as I've been streaming this the past few weeks to kind of learn the game. And when I say learn the game, I really mean learn the game, because like I said earlier, I come from Bedrock Edition. I've been a content creator on the Bedrock Edition of the game for a long time now, like five years, and I've been playing Bedrock exclusively for like six or seven years. I know nothing about modded Minecraft outside of the last few weeks of me streaming Vault Hunters, um, but I am a very technical player, so I've been learning quick. I like to learn everything that I can, and I, I would like to think that hopefully this series will kind of turn into a guide for a lot of you guys on top of just being really fun to watch. I like to kind of inform and teach and, and show the things that I learned along the way. Um, I like to get the most I can out of any game that I play. Look at all of these ores, a lot of coal, a lot of iron. Okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to we're going to cook down some iron or make uh, maybe a couple iron pickaxes. I'm going to get a lot of this stuff. But as I was saying, I like to go through a game and learn as much as I can about it, everything inside of it. And then I like to try to teach back what I learn as I go. And I like to try to optimize things. So like we're going to be really focusing hard on making like selecting really good skills, making our character really powerful with all the different gear that you can get, the stats on that gear that you can get, the skills we partnered up with to make ourselves the most powerful Vault Hunter to ever exist. Yes, even more powerful than Mr. Iskali himself. I know it's a, it's a hard feat. That's why it's a good goal. And that's what we're going to do. So uh, first thing we need is I need I need some more wood. Uh, we use all of our wood and I, I don't know how much wood there is on top of a mountain. I'm going to guess probably not a whole lot, although here's an acacia tree. There's some jungle trees back there. So I guess we got we got a little bit going on here. Let's uh, let's chop down a tree or two, get some wood, and I'm going to start mining some materials. And if you're wondering what today's goal is, we're going to run our first vault. Well, not today, not Minecraft day, but this episode, our goal is I want to run our first vault and go over everything that there is that you need to know about running and successfully completing your first vault. But that's a little bit later for now. Choppy choppy time. I'm pretty sure we just mined the biggest coal vein in Minecraft history. Literally two stacks of coal, basically, from that one vein. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's continue. Now, while I go through here and do a little bit more collecting, if you're curious about the like difficulty and such of the game and what we're playing on, we have the normal Minecraft difficulty set to hard. I don't know if that affects anything or not. I'm assuming it probably affects like normal overworld stuff. But more specifically, uh, we are playing with the game mode on normal, meaning that if we die in a vault post level 20, we, we die like we we lose all of our stuff. Um, you could buy your stuff back if you get a certain workbench. I don't remember the name of it off the top of my head. I'm sure 87 people will comment it down below for me. Um, but uh, we can buy our stuff back for for a cost for a price. It's not free and it, and it can get rather expensive. Uh, but we, we are playing in that mode where we can't. Is that cobblestone over there? Hold on a second. Do you hear that? Hello? Oh, hi. Can I see your chest? I'll take the goodies. Thank you. <laughs> I can reach both of them. Um, man of steel. I don't know what that is. Let's take all this. Thank you. Oh, he, yep. He wanted to shoot me. Okay. Bye. Thanks for your things. Now they're fighting amongst themselves. Um, also, we will be playing with the difficulty, the vault difficulty set to normal. My understanding is that going to a higher vault difficulty doesn't really affect anything. And I'm still kind of learning like all the ins and outs of vault hunters and how things work. So I think normal's fine for now. Um, but it's definitely possible that if not now in the future, um, in this season or, or a future season, we could we could do a higher a higher difficulty. But just want everybody to know how we're playing here in case you're deciding to like follow along. Oh, if you want the seed number, by the way, because this is a, honestly a really cool seed. There's the seed number on screen if you want to write that down too. Uh, we need we need more storage and we need to keep smelting. OK, uh, I have more iron to get, but I had to interrupt for that special news bulletin. Ooh, more food. 
Never pass up the opportunity for more food. And what's on the other side of this mountain? Other than a whole bunch of grass. Really tall grass. Oh! Oh! Hold on! Look at this! This looks really cool! So, like... This is like a big, like, this is the top of the mountain that we're on right here, right? And that's this, like, big area right here. And this is the little valley that we're basing out of. And this is like a big lip right here. It stretches, like, way out there. Oh, dude, that's really cool. And then that's another lip right there that drops down again. Oh, you know, what? this mountain, this thing is spectacular. You know what? This is main base material. I don't know how we lucked upon main base material in, like, the first, like, Five minutes of playing in the world. I mean, it was probably even less than that when we found this place. But this is awesome. You know what I picture? Like, this is this thoughts are hitting my head right now. We could have like a lot of farms through here, right? Like uh, crop farms and maybe like feel like decorative like stuff, right? Like uh, a big wheat field and a big uh, field of potatoes and carrots and beetroot and like different things through here, or maybe even like diff other maybe other farms. Maybe we do different things with different layers. I don't know. And looking at like how low this little shelf is right here that we're in and then looking at how low this shelf over here is. Hold on. Let's look. Are they about the same height? Um, yeah, they're roughly the same height. Like we could we could eventually like I'm talking like like late game, like we could tunnel from this side to that. Oh, dude. Oh, heck yes. Oh my God. I mean, are you guys excited? I'm actually really excited about this. I can't wait till we get to like later in the game. We have a lot to go. I'm going to finish collecting some of these resources and I'm going to show you how I prefer to go through and get a pretty decent amount of vault rock, vault stone, um, and chromatic steel early and safely in the game. I know a lot of people are going to say just go caving for it, and that's fine. And you can luck across it that way, but you could also end up doing a lot of searching and not finding anything. Uh, we're going to take a safer and what I think is a ultimately more productive route. Um, I think we're probably good on iron. I'm going to go smelt that back up. I'm going to get a few things prepared and we are going to make some moves. OK, plop that in there, empty out. And actually, I wanted to see if we come across a is that a village right there? That's actually incredibly close. There's another one down there. It's literally right over here. That's like close to, is that close to where we spawned? I always like checking a village out early because we can get some things that we're probably gonna need. To get into the vaults, you have to supply it with like, oh, that is a village. Um, you have to supply it with some pretty basic supplies. Usually it gets harder as you go, but I mean, it could ask for like potatoes or carrots or like wheat or something like that. So I think it'd be good if we hit a village and maybe borrow a couple crops and maybe even borrow a couple villagers. Ooh, melon. Melons are good to have too. Oh, um, waterfall. Oh God, that was really close. Sleep, prowl, sleep. Okay. Oh man, they have a lot of hay. Can I borrow some hay, please? Thank you. I don't think they needed this. Is there even anybody home? Oh, is there somebody now? Hi, I'm just helping harvest your wheat. This this all looks like wheat. Do you guys have any taters? Maybe we need to check a couple houses. Ooh, a lectern. This feels like it'll be nice to have. Also, books are usually nice to have early, so maybe we'll get a, a few. Emeralds and some boots. Oh, blast furnace. I'll take that. This village is huge. Yet doesn't really have much of value that I that I want. I'll be happy if I could just find a potato. We're getting good emeralds from here, at least. There's one last thing I want from here. Doink. Oh, hey, how's it going? That loom looks really cool. OK, bye. All right. I think what we're going to do is we're just going to walk over to here. I don't I don't think I'm going to go up the mountain. I might even like maybe we make a boat. That's going to be pretty easy travel. And then we're going to go over to this other village. And just so we know how to get back home, let's create waypoint. Uh, just a little map marker here and let's name this Mount Prowl. Arr, let's set sail on the jungle seas and go find some pirate's booty, which happens to be potatoes. That that's me. That's me getting a character to raid vaults later on. Potatoes. Mission successful. 
now I will have to climb this incredibly tall mountain to get back home. And I think before we go down into the depths of the caves and talk about where to get all of the goodies, I think I'm going to plant some crops first so they can grow while we're doing stuff. All right, let's get all of our crops we can plant. Wheat seeds, definitely potatoes. I should probably do some beetroot. Yeah, I think that'll be good. That's a good start anyway. Maybe like this area here. Time for Gardener Proud to get to work. Garden complete. Now we're going to dig. We're definitely going to need more pickaxe. Uh, I've, I've done some organizing here a little bit. The chest monster is at least somewhat organized at this moment. So we're going to need a few things. We're going to need to get some wood so that way we can make some uh, extra torches and mostly just so we, we have a stack of wood down there with us in case we need a building block, a block for torches or anything like that. Um, we're going to need to make some more tools, probably like numerous tools to bring down with us. And we're going to need to make a lot of ladders as well. And we need all of this because we're going to be going down to the bottom of the world because vault stone and chromatic iron are both found at that deep slate level. So I have the perfect way for us to find it. Ah! Run away! Run away! I don't even have armor yet! What are they doing here? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I don't even have a way to, to, to properly fight them. Get away from my home! I can't defend myself! He's still chasing me! I can take him. Oh. I don't have any villagers here, so I guess it's okay. You know what? You're going down, buddy. Ha! Ah. Yeah, take that. Yeah, this will show you guys. I have your captain's banner now. We're going to make some armor because that scared the living crap out of me. Much better. All right, we are now in perfect shape when it comes to wood. I just ate my last piece of like real food, though. So, oh, I have bread. Bread's not great but it'll do the trick. So now we need to go to sleep and then we need to dig a hole down into the ground because we're at Y level 152 right now. We could go and try to find some caves and go through and hopefully eventually wander past some uh, vault rock and some chromatic iron. But I really don't like going that route because it's it's a little bit more like it's very luck based, like you might find the vault rock you need. You might find a chromatic iron you need or you might not. And in the process, you're going to be fighting all sorts of bad things just to try to find that stuff and wandering around and trying to get your way down. And you know what? It's a big mess. So what do I like to do? I like the branch mine. But if, if you haven't seen this place, there's like caves all through here. So I don't know how necessarily we're going to get down. I know there's a lot of caves over there, so maybe if we dig down somewhere like right over here, I think could work. Oh gosh, we may, we may have found trouble. Hello. Oh, Hello. that's not good. Aha. Nope. Um, did not mean to do that. Nope. Did not mean to do that. There we go. What kind of goodies are there here? Ooh, I'll take that. Melon and pumpkin seeds. That's good. A blank rune. I don't know what that's for, but we'll grab it. Why not? It's a bunch of miscellaneous things. Yeah, why not? Let's fill up our inventory. That sounds like a lot of fun. Now with an easy way up and down and some more things in a furnace, I've been trying to keep as many things going through this furnace as possible. That way we need certain blocks or certain things. We have them like we could probably throw some copper in here. It'd be good. Also a cool thing with this mod pack and a lot of you modded pros may be used to this, but I am not being a bedrock guy. If you click and I, if I ever say left click or right click, just know that I invert my left click and right click. They're not the default. So I try not to say which button I'm clicking to. I don't want to confuse people, but if you click Click, it auto harvest and replants in a three by three segment. It only does it to things that are actually done like growing. 
It is so awesome. This makes me incredibly happy. I can't explain how happy it makes me to just be able to do this. Why? Why is this not regular Minecraft? I don't know. Um, but in any event, we can finish planting here because we're going to be down there in the mines for for a little bit, for a little bit. And it, this stuff is going to have an opportunity to grow while we're down there. So it'll just get us a head start on getting some crops going. Manual crop farming has never been so easy. All right, good. All of that is looking perfect. We shall throw our extra stuff in here. I think just having like a good like full offhand of torches will probably be all that we need. I'll probably still keep the wood on me just in case in the coal. Like uh, maybe I'll bring those down. Actually, we're gonna have to make chests while we're down there. So we're probably gonna use all the wood, um, but we are doing dynamic lighting. So this torch right here will light up the things around us. Oh, I put water at the bottom of here. Shall we test it? Geronimo! Let's make like a little landing right here and a little area for some chests. And here's where we're going to do our branch mining. So I'm going to, I don't know, we'll go three, four, something like this. I guess space is deep. We could put our trap door there and we're going to do some one by one branch mining. And the way I like to do it is I honestly just keep going all the way until I find something like what I'm looking for. And I turn back around. Um, also, although it's not really necessary, diamonds aren't as important. Like diamond gear is not as important in Vault Hunters because you're going to find much better gear than diamond and diamond becomes very useless very quick. We will probably through this process run across some diamonds. And if we get enough of them to make some basic gear, then it might not necessarily be a bad idea to do. Um, but in any event, we're down here at Y level negative 54, which is the best level for vault rock and chromatic iron. These appear in the deep slate levels. I believe they're evenly distributed, so I don't think it matters how high or low in the deep slate level that you are. Um, it's just it's just down here, right? But if we're going to be mining down here anyways, we might as well do it where we're also most likely to find diamonds because they could serve some purpose to us now and are used in some recipes later on and could even be asked for by the vault altar, which we'll go over that a little bit later once we get to that point. So all around good idea to have and we're going to keep going and I'll bring you guys in once we find what we're looking for. There's lava over here. I think I want to poke out and take a look. Why? Because lava. <laughs> look at it. It's right there. It's right there. That's vault stone, everybody. That right there is vault stone. Now is vault stone what we need first in the quest? Chromatic iron is what we need first. Um, that's okay. We'll still get the vault stone, but to complete the vault stone quest, we, I know, I know we have to actually mine the vault stone during the quest. So we'll leave like a patch of it to just mine later, but we'll still get, we'll still get most of it now. Or maybe, maybe we don't need to just, maybe we still need to grab it right now. Maybe we just mark it. All right. Well, that's awesome. That's super cool. Let's go ahead. And I think what we'll do I'll always do this. Like, I feel like once I hit like a good batch like this, like I've I've exhausted my luck for this tunnel. Maybe what we'll do those. We'll tunnel back one, two, three. So I'd want to tunnel back right here Four. OK, we're going to tunnel back. See if we find anything. We now. Oh, hello. We found something. Just not what I wanted. Uh, now we need to find some chromatic iron. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Look what we just found. This right here, everybody, is chromatic iron. Not to be confused with fluorite, which I don't have any here. Fluorite's the other one. It has the same kind of color, but they're like smaller markings. These are more like kind of like rectangular, like diagonally. But this is it. How much do I need? Acquire 16. This is what I think we're going to do. We're going to get our 16, but you can fortune this. And this stuff is extremely valuable. Very. You will run out of it quickly until you get really good at running vaults and finding it in the vaults. And even then you're going to want more, right? So we're going to get our 16. Um, okay, so we have our 16. So let's go to our quest. Scroll down and complete. And we got 24 chromatic iron as reward. Okay, now we, we got to go back. 
and we got to get our vault stone. Now the vault stone, there's no fortuning that like you just, you just get the stone. So we're just going to collect as much of it as we can. There's not a huge use for it, honestly, except for you get a lot of vault rocks from it, which you do need to make your vault crystals. So you'll probably want to get a decent amount up front, but the stone itself is not necessarily valuable. You only need a little bit of it to make your portal and you'll find vault stone inside of the vaults. When you find it inside of the vaults, you do actually get something from it there because there's like ores that are unique to the vaults that are only there hidden in the vault stone by the way fluorite this is fluorite much smaller chunks but it has like the same coloring as the chromatic iron so don't let it fool you trust me it probably will the first several times but we're almost back now and i'm gonna mine out most of if not all of that vault stone just because i i want to have it and i want as many vault rocks as i can get early on And we just mined our first 12 vault stone or 16 vault stone and we get our reward. Next is going to be vault rocks, but I'm going to spend some time mining out all the vault stone here and then we'll go up and we'll make our vault rocks. Holy crap. This is not the same vein. This is a whole different vein. We had two big veins of chromatic iron. Oh, dude, this is awesome. I'm I, like my mind is blown right now. This will be really good once we get fortune and we come through here and fortune all this up, which, by the way, fortune is much different to get in this mod pack than it is in normal vanilla Minecraft, by the way. Stay tuned for that because it's going to blow your mind if you don't know. But yeah, like that's oh, we are, we're going to have a ton. This is actually going to set us up for quite a long time. Trust me, we'll still run out of chromatic iron in the long run. Um, ooh, diamonds. Um, but still, it's um. That's a really, really good sign to see. This is going to help us out by quite a bit in the like early to like early mid game for sure. All right. Now that we're back topside, let's take a look at our next quest. Vault Rocks it wants us to make Vault Rocks. What are Vault Rocks? Well, we got a bunch of them. Here they are uh, breaking the Vault Stone. Now, to get the Vault Rock recipe, what you can do is you can use JEI, which is the inventory search system over here on the right. We just go over here, type in Vault Rock. We have it right here. Click that. And if you have the materials in your inventory, you can click the plus to move items and it'll put it in there. And then I would like to make a decent amount of these. So let's just go ahead and load everything in here. We'll click the balance grid button. We could make 21 vault rocks. There is no other use, at least that I've seen thus far. And I don't think that there is another use for the chip vault rocks other than making a vault rock. So we're just going to make all of them. And now we have vault rocks. So go back to our quest log. Let's hit complete. And it gives us another vault rock as a reward. So we'll do that. Next, the Vault Altar, also known as the Vaulter. Now it's time to craft your Vault Altar. Placing your Vault Rock in your Vault Altar is how you obtain your recipe for crafting a Vault Crystal. So let's do the same thing here. Let's go here. Let's type in Vault Altar. And as you can see, it takes two chromatic iron, two obsidian, which I'm going to have to go back down and get because we don't have any, a few stone bricks and a diamond. So I don't think I've run across any obsidian in any chests. Nope. So if you've done like me, and you've gone down into caves, you've probably run across obsidian. So I would just go ahead and get that. I'm going to do that now and then we'll make our vault altar. OK, good to go. Again, we have our vault altar here in the JEI. Uh, we need to get our diamond. And perfect vault altar has been acquired. Let's go back to our quest log complete. It'll give us a stone button. You have to use a button to consume the um, vault rock. Next, it wants us to get a vault crystal. We're going to do that in a moment because we got to put down our vault altar and make a actual like portal to do this. And where do we where do we want this portal to go? This little spot right here looks pretty solid. Um, to make the vault portal, it's just like another portal, but you have to use some type of vault stone for it. It could be polished. It could be the vault cobblestone. That part doesn't really matter. This has to be vault stone. It has to be made in the same style as another portal. So right now we have a mountain and complete. Yes, we have our vault portal here with some nice uh, polished, uh, what is vault stone that we got by putting it in a furnace. Um, and we have just a little bit of detailing going on here. Some deep slate pillars, uh, some andesite pillars, some little like fence things that I found that are really cool looking. Some tough blocks, some dark oak chests. The, the blocks in this pack are so cool and so fun. I love the way that this thing came together. 
and who knows, maybe our base will end up getting themed like this, or maybe we'll, we'll change things a bit. I don't know. But in any event, we have the things there that we need. And now we need to grab one of our vault rocks. We need to take a vault rock and we need to click it on the altar. And now the altar will tell us what it wants. It wants some leaves. So we're going to have to make shears. Uh, it needs a dirt block here. Here you go, altar. That's good. A stick and three iron. Basically, it's going to ask for random materials every time. It's going to start off as it has here now by asking for materials that are pretty easy to get. Oh, we need a couple more to make our shears. There we go. Um, and then as you go, it will both ask for more materials and it will ask for harder materials. So for now, we have it pretty easy. Um, we need leaves. It doesn't matter what type of leaves, just any kind of leaves will do. And honestly, this will be part of the basis of you making a lot of farms in the game later on is the fact that you're going to need to have a good way to farm and have like good quantities of a lot of different materials. But luckily, with all the different mods in this pack, there's going to be a lot of really easy ways to do that. But for now, let's throw these guys in. Let's throw. I don't remember how many it was. Let's throw them all. Throw these out, pick them back up. Any of the extras. Um, and I like to have a couple chests here. Um, one for gear that I'm going to swap. We'll have a better way to swap gear later, but for now, uh, having a chest over here for that is good. And then another one for like various like materials that typically find their way pretty frequently into the vault. Now we hit the button here. It makes a little boop sound and we get our vault crystal. Now, if we check our menu real quick, go to quests, vault crystal quest is complete and it gave us a shulker box. Now. This next part, make sure you do it before you go in. Otherwise, you are going to be hurting. This is going to tell you a little bit about the skill and talent system. I'm not going to read it to you. You can read that yourself as you go through and progress. Um, but by scrolling down to the end of this, it will give us eight more cooked vault steak. And we check this little check mark and it's going to give us a free skill point. And that is super important to get started here. We're going to want to go to our abilities menu here. So you see there it says we have one unspent skill point up in the top right hand side of the screen. And we're going to want to spend that. And I could tell you pretty much 100% of the time you're going to want to spend it on heal. And you're going to want to make sure that you bind heal to a button. Now, I think I have it bound to... Yes, I have it bound to my mouse button, so that's good. You saw my mana go down. I used the heal ability, and the heal ability, if you click on it, it'll tell you what it does. It has a 10-second cooldown at level 1. It heals you for 2. Remember, each heart it, that you have on your bar is actually 2 health, like there's a half heart and another half heart, so this will heal you for 1 full heart. It's your only way to heal. You don't naturally regenerate health, so eating food does absolutely nothing. And also, you know, I'm kind of curious, are we... Are we able to craft the better enchanting? Because honestly, that's a really good thing to have. Let's check real quick. We want to check the vault enchanter and we can craft it. It's a little expensive. Two chromatic iron blocks. So we need 18 chromatic iron. I have I have 17 chromatic iron. This is going to be our way, though, to um, to get enchantments early, including be able to get all of our chromatic iron down there. So I think I'm I think I'm going to do that real quick. And I think we're going to do a couple things real quick to make our lives a little bit easier. We're going to grab these villagers right here. We're going to make this into a bunch of slabs. We're going to make two composters, put two holes in the ground. Oh, these poor, these poor, poor guys. Um, and we'll take a couple trap doors and we'll put our new friends, hopefully. Yeah, there we go. Down in there. Perfect. I need to go down and get me one more um, chromatic iron ingot and then we'll be set. OK, I think we have everything we need. I think we need a couple diamonds on us because we need to go in here. We're going to make the vault enchanter. Remember, if you want to learn a little bit about it, I'm going to show you, but that you can read about it right here as well. Um, but we're going to go to the vault enchanter. We do need an enchanting table. I do have the things for that. So we'll hit the plus button there, add it in, go to the vault enchanter, hit the plus button here, make it. And here we go. I don't I don't have a fancy place for this to go at the moment. So I guess we'll just kind of go buy our other stuff. And this is the Vault Enchanter. Take a look because it is the coolest, most amazing thing. Take something you want to enchant right now. That's going to be our pickaxe. We're going to place it right here. We can purchase any enchantment for the cost of one level plus five emeralds. Remember how I was set? I set up my little crop farm over there and recommended you guys do the same. Well, there was a reason for that, because now we could take some of those crops uh, which we have a few of. And then our, our little friend down here, we could talk to him. We can hit the cycle trades button 
and it will cycle through his trades. And we're going to wait till we get potatoes and wheat as the two things we can trade them. And here it is. So now I can click and then refill a couple times, click, refill a couple times. And now I have 17 emeralds. And what are we going to do with that? Well, we're going to go here for a pickaxe. We're going to get, uh, let's see, unbreaking on it first. Then we'll get uh, fortune on it. Then we'll get efficiency five on it. Now we can go get the rest of those tools. Now I'm going to want to do this a couple more times. Really? Really more than anything, I'm going to do this one more time. Let's take our boots off. We're going to, oh, yeah, we, we're going to do it with our hoe. We're going to take our hoe. I don't care that it's an iron. It doesn't really matter because we're not going to take durability loss on it anyways. Uh, we're going to go to our hoe and we're going to put fortune three on it. That way, next time we harvest crops, we get fortune return on it, which will help us very quickly and easily get more emeralds. And then we will put the depth strider on our boots and at that point we'll be ready to go in now you may be asking well proud if you're going to go and fight stuff why not get like uh protection and sharpness on a sword and all of those different things we'll probably make a sword actually but those enchantments aren't aren't available you can't you can't do those uh, we only have a few diamonds left actually we need two of them this will get us a sword which will be nice to have in there and yeah i'm going to farm a few more crops and then we're going to enter the vault Okay, I think I have us ready to go. I went back down and took the fortune pickaxe and got all that chromatic iron down there and take a look. We got three stacks of it right there and there and in here. So we got about like nine stacks or so of chromatic iron, which is going to be so awesome. It's so great. Oh, also, I'm sorry I didn't capture this on camera. I, me and a creeper, we we had a run in. It happened over there somewhere. It it wasn't good. The, the creeper, he he gave me a hug. And anyways, we're 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 good. We're fine. We're back. We got stuff cooking here, and we're about ready to go into the vault. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. I can't go into the vault yet because the update that changes the first vault run, it comes out Sunday. And for me, today is Friday. So I have to wait. That crystal we made, I'm pretty sure it pre-generates what the vault is. It, it generates from the crystal. So this crystal, I can't I can't even use it because if I do, you guys will not get the proper vault run. So I was thinking what we do is we save the crystal. So if anybody has any cool ideas of what we can do with this crystal to kind of commemorate the end of update 12 and the beginning of our new Let's Play series here in update 13, let me know. Um, but yeah, I guess when you guys see me again, I will have made a new crystal for update 13 and we'll be going into the portal. All right, here we are. It's Sunday night. I'm back and I'm ready to go in. But unfortunately, we're not in update 13 yet. Um, Iskow had to delay the update due to uh, a major bug and a couple of changes last second they decided to make. So update 13 will probably be out in a few days. And the main difference was going to be that the first time you go through vault objective is different is why I was waiting. Uh, we will still run across that new vault objective when update 13 hits, probably in the next episode or two, I imagine. So rather than waiting, I want to get started. Everything else that we talk about will be the same or at least should be really the only difference will be the objective we're trying to complete and i believe the objective that we're trying to complete uh which will be the monoliths is not there anymore at all so this that's really the only part that should not be relevant anyways we're going to take our crystal we're going to click it in here and by the way i made a new crystal we do still have our og crystal over there so we're going to keep that one as a memento and we are going to go in and luckily when we go in it's going to take a second to load we don't have to worry about the timer going off right away um, once we're in here, as we are right now, you'll see a timer show up in the bottom left hand side of the screen. Twenty five minutes. That timer starts once I go through that little archway right there. All of the uh, different vaults have different themes of the vault itself and different themes of the room uh, rooms that you go through. And we're not going to go over those right now because that we're going to go over those a little bit like as we play through the game. Uh, but just know that they look really awesome. They really do. Try not to get distracted by all the pretty blocks and trying to collect them. Although later on, you may want to do some block collecting. But for your first vault, you really just want to focus on one thing, and that's completing the objective. You see, for us, we have to find the monoliths, and we only have to find two of them. Oh, man, I just realized something. Okay, um, it should be fine. Um, I didn't bring, and I normally recommend this, I, I normally recommend bring a colorful block 
to mark where like what doorways you go through so you know how to get back to the vault because in 25 minutes time we have to not only find the two monoliths we have to make it back through this vault portal some of the objectives you have to do require you to come back to the portal some of them you will complete by finding a, a like a little thing out here that you will click on that will once your objective is done take you out so you'll always want to know either how to get back to those little things which will appear in the rooms we'll go over those objectives when we get to them or in our case we want to make sure we know how to get back to our vault the easiest way to do that this early is to just go in one direction you'll see in our mini map on the top right hand side of the screen we are going east to west so what we're going to do as we go through is we are only going to go west in the vault um that way when it's time to come back we know we only have to go east in the vault now your first vault run it's going to be pretty slow because you don't have any like extra little bits and things to help make it faster for you uh, but what's going to happen here Ooh, we got some uh, gilded chests there is once you get close to um some chests a fizzle spawner is going to go off and that spawner is going to spawn in some mobs that are going to try to kill you and you're going to try to back up and kill them just like we did there and whenever you need to heal use your heal ability and then when you go into a chest Oh, sometimes you can't get into it because it's got a solid block above it. When you go into a chest, you're going to want to have a button bound to sort container. I do have a button bound for that. And then just drag everything into your inventory and always look everywhere because these little these chests can be hidden anywhere. I'm surprised there's only two here. Um, and every vault room consists of three levels. We walked down to the lower level. It's where we are right now. Now we're going to loot chests. Oh, um, can we reach you? That should be all of them from best I could tell it is. And we're going to complete each level. So right now we're going to complete the bottom. And later on vaults, you might not loot like this. You might end up skipping different rooms or skipping different sets of chests because you have certain objectives that you're trying to complete. But early on, probably through your first like 10 to 20 levels, you're going to want to just get everything. You just want to get everything that you can and do it as quick as you can. Always keep an eye on that timer on the bottom left hand side of the screen as well, because if you don't, if you don't and that timer runs out, you're going to die. And what happens when you die? Well, below level 10, nothing except you don't get XP. Coins, um, pickaxe. Trying to keep an eye out behind me. Um, these are coins. These are another thing that you can get. You use uh, vault bronze, which is what we're picking up here for a variety of different things. So this is this is lower level complete or mid level uh, complete, I think. Now we're gonna go to the upper level. Oh look, there's one of our monoliths, and here's some um, ornate chest. Different types of chests have different types of loot in them. So that's why sometimes later game you're going to like pick some chests over others in terms of like getting stuff as you can see my inventory is already full so i'm going to click everything that is stackable i'm going to put it in here in my uh, shulker box and then we'll just we'll just keep filling that up until uh, we might we might just run out of space which if we do that's fine that's okay uh, my recommendation for you is try to keep your health full because it gives you time for mana to regen and you can go into all fights with full health um, you'll also see as we go through vaults, they like how you go through them and engage with them changes drastically from like level one to level 10, level 10 to level 20. And, and like the later on you get in the game, it really does change a lot how you go through the vaults, um, how quickly you loot. Um, you can start breaking the chest with special uh, like skills that we can't do right now, which lets you collect things from them faster. You have a magnet that sucks the items up to you. There's like a lot of really cool things that are going to change with like how we go through and attack and loot vaults, all the skills and abilities. So I just wanted to kind of point that out for those of you that I know there's a certain amount of people that only like watch one episode, just kind of check it out. So just know that vault runs now are way different than vault runs later on. They change dramatically as you go through the game. Another great thing to have in these vaults is a, an elytra. Um, we'll probably try to craft one at some point to get it to fly around and go from top to bottom. There's some skills you can use that'll, oh, hello, help you like scale from like top to bottom as well. Oh gosh. Um, this will give us regenerate all of our health. So that's cool. And again, we're going to do top, main level and bottom. Most of your points of interest to attack are going to be main level and bottom. Not going to there's not going to be much in the middle. Ooh, another coin room. Great.
And here's our second monolith. So I remember one thing I was saying earlier that I, I kind of got like, interrupted my cell phone a little bit was um, dying. So there's a beginner's grace during your first uh, 10 levels of vault hunting. Beginner's grace essentially is like if you die, you don't lose anything. You don't get XP for completing the vault. You have to complete the vault to get XP, but you don't you all of your items, all of your equipment, all your inventory. You get to keep all of that between level 10 and 20. You do take a hit to durability of your gear, a pretty significant one, actually, if you die. So that's something that you're going to have to account for. And then post level 20, all of your like beginners grace type things they're they're all done. You don't get any of that anymore. And what that means is when you die, you lose all of your stuff. Kind of what I mean by kind of is that with a certain um, like workbench, which we'll show you when we get to that point, you could buy your stuff back. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, although if you do play the game, oh, it's a living chest over there. Those are nice. Um, if you play the game on casual mode, this does not apply. You always get all of your stuff back from dying. You just don't complete the vault when you die. So uh, again, just another one of those things to keep in mind. Now, leave me alone. Oh, yeah. Now, unfortunately, this is this is going to fill our inventories because we, we haven't found living chests yet. So this is like all new stuff and I'm not going to be able to fit it in my shulker box. Um, If we can find and I, I don't know that we will, maybe we will like a bridge or something. If we can find some regular wood. Um, Oh, actually, we've seen a crafting table somewhere, too. What, what I'm getting at is if we can if we can somehow make ourselves a chest, we can. Uh, make another shulker box. So we're going to be on the lookout for for wood. Ah, like this. So here's our crafting table. Uh, we're going to have to get rid of something. This ornate chain is just decorative, so we can get rid of that. Now we just need to keep a like a lookout for a few pieces of wood to make a chest. Oh, here it is. Perfect. One, two, three. I don't know how much I need. Four. We'll grab four. Um, let's just throw this out and this out temporarily. Um, let's actually sit down our crafting table super quickly. Um, let's throw this in here and get planks. Let's throw this in here and get a couple of chests. Let's place down our current shulker box. Get our, where's our shulker? Oh, they're right here. Uh, grab our shulker shells. One, two, and now we have extra shulker boxes so we can easily store all of our stuff and continue our run. We have 12 minutes left. That's a decent amount of time to still go through the vault and get things. Let's keep healing and let's keep going east to west. We should have enough time to fully raid this room. Eventually, you get to the point where you can raid like a bunch of rooms, like a whole lot of them. We're not at that point yet. We'll, we'll be good to get these three completely raided. I don't know where that sound was coming from underneath me, like down here. Yep. Oh, Al. Oh, let's find these guys. Where are they? I don't know where they are. That's OK. They'll jump. They'll jump scare me in a minute. That's how it works. This has been a pretty good first run so far. We've gotten quite a lot of chess, actually. Ow. And keep a lookout on our time. We're at 11 minutes. We're good. All right, here they are. I'm going to go ahead and clear out the rest of the riffraff. We're going to get close to that um, timer to leave, and then we're going to head out. Oh, we got a champion mob. Uh, these guys, they hit a lot harder, so you got to be very careful with them. As you see, he's got a lot more health as well. I'm trying to like crit him. Perfect. And you get special drops from them too. So the champs, don't just run away from them. You absolutely want to fight them. Ooh, an anvil. Yeah, we'll take that. And honestly, probably the cauldron too. Sometimes picking up some of these like a little bit harder to get early game 
uh, drops or like ones that are just more expensive to you generally are a good idea if you have the, the opportunity. Another enchanting table too? Yeah, I'll take that. All right, now here is what will separate some people from others. Oh gosh, I'm, I'm, I'm literally gonna do it to myself. Oh no, I can't, I can't get to that anyways. Okay, um, some of you are gonna wanna run back super early. Some of you are gonna want to greed. And as this guy 85 himself says, greed is good, but probably not on your first run. We've actually gone as far west as we can. And we got two and a half minutes left. We don't have any way to extend our run if we wanted to. It's early on, so it's not like greeting will get us a whole lot anyways. So we're just going to go ahead and head back um, straight east because we direction we were going the whole time. I think we have uh, two more rooms this way to go. And there's our portal. So we had a minute left on the clock. We, we maybe could have greeted a little bit more. But again, it's our first vault run um, of the series, so it's okay. Um, I would say this vault was a big success and we could find out how big of a success it was by going through the portal because we will get a readout of how our vault run did. We had 15,000 XP, which is really great for a uh, vault run. And you can see we collected uh, 92 chests, 31 piles of coins and killed 90 mobs. Like this was a really good first vault run. And we've gone from level zero to level five. We literally gained five levels there. Oh man, I'm gonna need to light this area up because this is, this is very dangerous. And before we finish up here, Let's go ahead and let's set down our shulker boxes here. Let's just like push up like any extra loot that we have into them. And when you finish doing a vault run, you will get a crate for the run. The harder the objective and the higher level the vault, the better the stuff in the crate. But if we go ahead and click here, uh, nothing too special. Okay, let's take a look here. Uh, we got a mystery box, which can contain some goodies. Nothing too special usually, but we got something out of it. And we got several pieces of gear. Now we'll, we'll talk a bit more about gear in a future episode, but it's always fun when you get new gear to open it up. Uh, did we get any other gear? I thought we had at least one other piece. Yep, there's that. Yes. So uh, for now, if we want to display the gear, all we got to do is click and we can just click on each one of them. It will randomly roll. Let's see what we get. All right, we got a scrappy chest, scrappy legs, and a scrappy shield, and then a common shield. Commons of, like scrappy's the lowest tier, commons like the next tier up. But really, regardless of what it is, it's gonna be better than what we have. Even if you're wearing diamond gear, you're gonna wanna use it. Cause you see here, we get a three boost to armor and our stats, uh, knockback resist and item quantity stats. We'll put that on. Um, the leggings here uh, will give us five armor plus three health, Item rarity at 7%. That's actually really good. Um, you also get ability power, which we're not going to go over right now. But again, those are great. So we're going to put those on. We have two different shields to look at. This one's got thorns damage and knockback resist. This one has block chance of 10%, thorns damage and knockback resist. So this is better as well. So we will equip that in our shield slot. Um, we also got a few other cool things here, like some Kiwis, which can extend your time in the vault at the expense of 10% of your health. And like we got three shulker boxes just stacked full of stuff that we're gonna have to find a place for. And I think that's where we'll start our next episode is we need at least minimum a um, storage place to store our things because we're going to get a lot of it and we're going to want to keep all of it early on especially and we're going to spend the next episode going through our next bits of our quest oh the better enchanting i forgot to click that earlier and then we're going to be able to do some other bits here and we're going to go through these quests throughout the series and complete all of them as we get up to level 10 and above we have five skill points to spend we're going to spend those in the next episode as well so if you enjoyed this one please do me a big favor make sure you click that like button to show that you like the episode and click that subscribe button if you new to the channel and you would like to subscribe those things will help that youtube algorithm do its work drop me a comment down below let me know what types of things are you liking about vault hunters are you playing yourself or not do you plan on playing if you're not already and what's your favorite thing to do in vault hunters for all those people that are playing and tips for newbies to help them get started thanks for watching and i'll see you next time bye